never occurred to me that um, you could actually learn the harp and it was somehow out of this world, <laughs> for me at least. Hi Nadia, how are you doing today? Hi, very, very good. Thank you so much Victoria, for having me. Well, Raf has told me that uh, you're probably one of the most well-known and uh, prominent harp figure in Germany when it comes to the Celtic harp scene. So I'm very excited to have you here with us. <laughs> Tell us about your music journey. How, how do you end up with the harp? Um, yeah, well, um, uh, actually, I always, I love the sound of the harp. Um, I remember even like um, as far back as when I was a kid, like five years old, my parents, they um, uh, listened often to classical music. They had a whole collection of records at their home, and one of them was Nikrono Zabaleta, the great works um, of classical harp. And um, sometimes we listened to this, and uh, I always loved the, yeah, the sound, the frequencies. And even as a child, I thought, wow, this is, yeah magical and um i remember i always wanted to do something with it like form the sound or something but it was only in my imagination and um i started the piano when i was five and um well actually it never occurred to me that um you could actually learn the harp and it was somehow out of this world <laughs> for me at least and um when I was about 16, um, uh, there was the Scottish harp duo Sheila's um, with uh, Patsy Sutton and Mary McMaster coming to Germany. And um, my mom saw that and um, that they were kind of in town. I was living in the region of uh, near Cologne at that time. And so I went to the concert and it was um, totally um, yeah, the <laughs> lightning struck me. <laughs> uh, because that was for the first time I saw that, oh, smaller harps exist. They are accessible. And then um, uh, the kind of music they were playing. I mean, if you saw them at that time, uh, they were already, as a duo, they were fantastic. What, what they did, like melodious um, uh, pieces, very, very rhythmic um, singing um, in harmonies. And uh, they... Yeah, I think they had a, uh, already the Kamak electro harp at that time. So it was a combination of all kinds of sounds of the harps, like um, electro harp, wire strung harp, and then the whole repertoire. So I was hooked <laughs> from <laughs> that time on. So um, uh, I bought their cassettes, yes, <laughs> and uh, listened to them hundreds of times, and. Um, Luckily, the, the organizer of that concert, uh, of the Scottish Harp Duo, he was a harpist himself, Tom Down, and he organized, um, a meeting with, um, with the harp maker, uh, Frank Sievert, uh, who built my first harp. And this is how I, I came to the harp. It's the story. <laughs> yeah. And you, when you started, you first self taught and you study with a classical, teacher i imagine that's probably because celtic harp might not be as popular back then say compared to now is that correct yes well um actually uh, i i only um started with a classical teacher uh seven years ago that was very very late i i had already like many many concerts um recorded cds and uh, that was all self-taught and uh, only kind of recently, <laughs> I took the uh, the classical harp lessons. And, um, well, it's now been seven years uh, again, but um, never regretted it. it. It was really a very, very good decision. And, um, but before that, yeah, um, I mean, on the Celtic harp in Germany, uh, there were not so many resources when I started um, back in, in the 90s. Yeah. You couldn't get online lessons or, um, yeah, even sheet music was not so um, easy to get, I mean, without the internet. 
Yeah, definitely. And you speaking of your first heart that was uh, built by Frank, I was told he's a pretty prominent name in the heart making scene in Germany. And he taught, um, I'm not going to say it right, but his name is Pepe Weisgerber, who built a heart mm-hmm. for uh, Javier, which is one of our team members, and also his teacher, Brabet. And I have I, my eyes on one of his heart for a long time, and I'm going to have to <laughs> get a German heart at right. some point in my life. And then, I, I actually, I discovered that... Which one? I really like the Artemis 34 and 39. Like, I really just love the shape of it. There's something about wow. the shape mm-hmm. that really speaks to me. <laughs> but what I was really um, uh, struck by is there are a lot of... Celtic heart makers in Germany now. Yes. Uh, do you mm-hmm. think that has helped popularize the Celtic harp in uh, your country? Yes, definitely. Um, it's uh, really uh, wonderful to see um, there are so many uh, young harp makers now who, of course, uh, um, are inspired by another generation, but um, it's like uh, everybody is um, developing their instruments and also what's great to see, they're, they're working together. I can see them at, uh, like at the festivals, at the workshops, and um, then there's the room where the harp makers are. I mean, of course, not all, only German ones, but come in from all over the place. But um, it's really a very, very um, friendly atmosphere, and um, they are. Uh, you can see there, they want to create something great together. It's not like mm, I want this client, I want this client, you know. Yeah. <laughs> It really is, great. It, it is great. It's very beautiful, actually. And I see a lot of collaborations, too, uh, mm-hmm. between a lot of harpists with um, other instruments, which we'll talk about because you have done some as well in your career. Um, but going back to inspiration, I know you have cited Kim Robinson as one of your inspiration. Mm-hmm. What other harpists has inspired you to find your style of music? Well, I think uh, Kim Robertson was the main one um, to, to start off with. Um, I was very fortunate. I could also do, um, I could do a workshop with her um, in the early 90s. And uh, she has influenced me a lot, her way of uh, um, giving melodies a shape. Uh, of, she always um, tells that finding the essence of the music and... Um, uh, Also mixing traditional and um, original music, like taking a melody and uh, composing introduction and interludes and stuff. Um, But that wasn't your question. (laughs) Still good to hear what people um, inspire um, the people that I talk to, because I I get inspired by people like you too. So it's always interesting to see, you know, who do you get your inspiration from and, and... what kind of, um, I guess, uh, people have helped shape the, the music uh, sound that you're making these days? Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's see. So, um, well, there, um, in the beginning, yeah, Sheila's that I already mentioned. And uh, I think, yeah, Wendy Stewart was also, because she was also in, in, in workshops uh, in Germany, um, her way of uh, arranging songs and singing uh, um, that has also influenced me and um, uh, let's see um, I think apart from that it's it, in the early years it was um, not just harp players but um, also um, yeah Music of all different styles, like a lot of classical music also. Um, I, um, when I studied at the conservatory in Dusseldorf, I also did, um, like songs of, um, like by Brahms, Mendelssohn, and I love their way of accompanying, um, uh, a voice with, uh, always different accompaniments. And so um, this, I, I thought, oh, oh, that's great. Not always playing the same accompaniment to every verse of a song, but um, really um, creating an accompaniment that, is, uh, that suits the lyrics, that goes um, with the lyrics, that uh, enhances the lyrics. So that has also influenced me a lot when I started arranging songs on the harp. 
So it's it's really influences from from all over the place. Oh. Yeah. You released your first album twenty years ago, and yeah. you have released <laughs> eight more since. Um, and your latest one was in twenty nineteen, and there was a very interesting mix in there. I, I particularly actually enjoy your al- album of lullabies. Uh, I like to play it to my children. Um, they were actually, oh, I, they're very fortunate. I think they they have a lot of good hard music that they can listen to. <laughs> and totally. you have uh, also an album, The Glow Within, with a percussionist that I also found very interesting. How would you describe your music style and, and how have you uh, changed or perhaps evolved over the years? And how do you see yourself continuing to change or maybe just enhancing what you're doing going forward 20 years is a long time well, it's a me, long it time is. yes <laughs> <laughs> yes it is um well um i think my music style has um hmm, how can i say that um well as i mentioned before when i came to the harp i um kind of uh i was coming out of um, conservatory where I um, studied classical singing and so my uh, arrangements were very um, complicated (laughs) and uh, um, I think that has slimmed down a little bit I'm looking more for like the essential uh, um, things like less is more (laughs) and um, yeah, otherwise it's always hard to describe your own music, isn't it? Um, um, I did a lot of traditional arrangements when I first started my first solo programs, and I'm uh, getting more and more to um, yeah, writing my own music, uh, composing. Um, I did in between some songwriting, um, but now it's really a lot of instrumental compositions that I'm doing at the moment. And, but it might go back to song, songwriting at some point. I don't know. It's just a little bit dormant at the moment. Yeah. And have you always wanted to sing with uh, your instrument? Because I know singing is a big part of your study. And uh, yeah, you that's a voice. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a very interesting question. Uh, actually, no. <laughs> when, I, when I first uh, started the harp, I totally did not imagine... Um, I th- uh, that was me, the classical singer, and then playing the harp. And um, actually bringing the two together was kind of a, um, a coincidence. Um, it was born out of a... Uh, I got a call from an, an organizer for uh, for a Christmas concert when I was still studying in Düsseldorf. And um, he said, yeah, he called me as a classical singer. And he said, uh, yes, there is a Christmas party of um, a company and it's taking place in this industrial place, very hip, very chic. And um, uh, could you sing some Christmas songs? And I said, uh, yeah, so sure, no problem. There's just one thing. Uh, she said, um, there's no piano. So it's outdoors. It's, it's outside. And no, there's no piano. And so I said, oh, I could accompany myself on the harp. And she was thrilled. She said, oh, wow, that's great. <laughs> and um, then I, uh, yeah, we we agreed on, on the terms. And after that conversation on the phone, I thought, oh, I haven't done this before. <laughs> so <laughs> I had just sold something that I hadn't um done before so but then um it all went very smoothly and uh, i actually um built uh, my first christmas repertoire and uh it, it came together really really naturally with these two and, uh, so that it was um yeah um a thing that just happened very very naturally to to bring the two together i mean of course it's obvious if you can sing if you um play the harp you can try to bring the two together but for me somehow Celtic harp and classical singing wasn't so obvious to bring together but then it merged yeah and it's a a beautiful combination in my opinion thank you (laughs) and I want to ask you about your YouTube channel because well Mm -hmm. before I even 
um, get into harp uh, when I was just starting to look into it. Your, um, I think it's the trip to the island video, always get suggested by <laughs> YouTube, and I know, was, thank you. Right? It's <laughs> everywhere, and my and when I, I talk, tell my teacher that I'm interviewing you, and he's like, "A trip to the island." Everyone knows that piece. It's amazing, <laughs> and you have over two million views now. How do you feel about that? Did you ever expect um, that many people to enjoy Celtic music and songs from you? Um, well, I'm I'm really happy it um, that it uh, turned out this way because with my YouTube channel, I uh, have the possibility to to promote the music and also when I bring up new sheet music, I can make a video and um, so people can listen to what it looks like. And um, well, I mean, I started this channel back in 2007, <laughs> and uh, for a long time, nothing really happened and. Um, I think even the video, A Trip to the Islands, uh, I recorded this in, in, let's see, I think it was in 2015 or something. Yes. And then I had, because I thought, mm, is this really good enough? Is it really, you know, how it is? <laughs> it was like one year in the draw before um, I decided to uh, publish it. And then, but on the first weekend, uh, I, I think I got over 1000 hits, like just in two days on this, um, uh, on this video. And so I thought, Oh, a lot of people like this. Nice. And, um, now it's, I think it's, uh, it can reach like a million in spring next year or something, which I, I'm actually quite proud of because it's, um, it's not a cover. You know, it's it's not a um, thousand years or, uh, you know, something that a James Blunt song or something. And uh, so I'm I'm really really happy that this is uh, this is viewed. Um, and I think it's also part of my playlist. So um, I can't really explain why, but um, it's because it's also very simple. Uh, um, speaking of. Uh, cinematography nothing much is going on <laughs> it was just filmed with <laughs> with a smartphone and but i took the the sound um i recorded that extra so i was able to to mix it and uh in like how with the means that i had at that time and uh, so this is um that result i mean from 2015 so yeah i'm, I'm really really happy yeah, and you it's... should be. <laughs> what are some of the maybe lesser known songs from you that we should also check out? And uh, I'm I had this goal to learn one piece of sheet music from every guest that I talked to that published sheet music. So, what might be some other pieces other than um, a trip to the islands that maybe we should check out and learn? Um, well, I would be really really happy if you would check out uh, Vals dans les vignes. It's um um yeah. How can you describe it? It's um the title is French. I uh, recorded the video in in Alsace in the vineyards, and um, uh, it has um, a recognizable melody, but then also a lot of variations. And um, actually, it was um, inspired also by the music of. Bernard Andres, um, a fantastic French composer, and um, uh, it was also inspired when I um, when I learned in my classical uh, harp studies to make more use or to challenge the left hand more. So there's a lot of runs for the left hand in this. So if you want to do something, if you want to challenge your left hand, or um, this is the piece for you. <laughs> And um, yeah, so Vals dans les vignes. Um, and you could also check out the Toccata, which is um, maybe this is also for you because it's very rhythmic and uh, it's in D minor and um, it's a mixture between folk style and classical. So there's a melody that could be Breton, but then there's also uh, parts in it uh, that could be like for. Um, could be in a classical organ piece or chamber music. 
check that out as well. You made quite a lot of videos outside. What were some of the more memorable places that you have filmed uh, in? Mm, well, um, and you have I'm even filmed looking... in the snow, which I found very yes, that was definitely very very memorable. Um, and thinking back of that uh, shooting, I think I should have. Um, well, the first the piece is called First Snow, so it was also in Alsace. And um, um, looking back, I kind of regret that I took all the filming material that I had, because you can see a bit of uh, the change of the altitude. There are some scenes in the crisp snow, and then there are some scenes in a kind of more muddy. <laughs> Uh, and this is, um, I think, um, as a well filmmaker, I would um, uh, also say now, um, don't use all the material that you have just because it was you went through a lot of mud and cold to get it. <laughs> if if it's not, uh, if it doesn't fit the rest, and just yeah, um, uh, don't put it in, no matter how cold you were and how wet and <laughs> yeah that was definitely memorable but um it was uh it was beautiful actually to to do um the part in the crisp snow um i think one of the most memorable experiences was filming um the lady of Goleris because i filmed that at, at the rhine it's a very slow piece um in c major and so i wanted um uh, the, the, the wideness of the water to to go with this um, kind of let them the melody expand on this uh, and uh, there is a, a bird sanctuary not far well actually it's a, a protected area for water birds they also stay uh, during the winter and um, there were a lot of swans but they were a little more further off so um, I suddenly realized when I was filming that um, behind me there there were some swans uh, flying and landing, and, that, and then I I just kept playing. I, actually, it was just um, a shot for um, for trying something out. I didn't even have my my playback in, but I thought um, I'll just keep playing because obviously there's swans flying behind me, and so it was really beautiful and. Uh, I saw it in the material later that um, it, they just they, uh, they totally fitted um, the the whole scenery super nicely. So I was I was very very happy about this. It was a a gift. <laughs> We're gonna put a link to that uh, music video so our audience can yeah, check it thank out. Thank you. As well. Yeah, and I want to go back to the glow within, which um, mm -hmm. I actually I was very uh, interested in the different percussion instrument that was involved in the uh, pieces when I was watching. I think it must be the Byron Baroque's, uh March video because mm -hmm. I see Steve playing in there. What yeah. uh, it drew you to make that collaboration, and um, what do you think about the sound? How how did you uh, how did you find it? As, as the person in the room, like we're just listening to the recording. And so I, I, I feel like in person, it might even be more dramatic and, and give a different resonance. Yes, definitely. So um, Steve Habeck is a percussionist from Wales and um, not only percussionist, but also he forges his own gongs. So he, um, yeah, he makes them from metal. And so also the, the title of the, um, of the album and also of our duo, the glow within is also inspired by this because um, he, uh, when he forges the metal, it it glows, and then also I, the the sound are <laughs> the sounds of his instruments are glowing. I think um, absolutely, and um, it was actually Steve who approached me. Um, he had seen my work on the internet, and then he said, "If you ever need a percussionist." Um, how about we uh, we work together? Um, and I filed this under highly interesting. If I ever need a percussionist, <laughs> yeah, I think because he was yeah in the Netherlands at that time, and um, or even in England, yeah. And um, a, a while later, I think about a year later, um, I got um, 
invited to a festival in in, uh, in Barcelona, the Saint Maynard um, International Health Festival, and they said, um, uh, "We would lo love to have you, um, maybe with a percussionist or something." And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, okay." <laughs> and so that was um, when I recontacted Steve and uh, I said, uh, "Yeah, um, uh, please come over. Let's let's try um, to to bring some rep repertoire together." And um, it was really amazing. I, I remember he arrived by train in Strasbourg and he had just one suitcase and like Mary Poppins <laughs> out of the suitcase. <laughs> he was uh, pulling out this this amazing percussion set. Maybe um, I'll send you a photo then you uh, can, um, or you can also see it in the video. Um, uh, he has this percussion stand and then all kinds of gongs and cymbals. One is shaped like a dragon and uh, a row of tuned gongs. And it was all in this one suitcase. So it's really wow. also logistically. Definitely the magical <laughs> Mary Poppins carpet bag right there. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Super. Yes. And the sound is, is really, really amazing. I mean, we also did um, a lot of live concerts together at the moment. Sadly, we have to pause not only because of um, the pandemic, pandemic, but also uh, uh, because um, he has his British passport. Uh, Brexit makes a lot of things a lot harder for him as well, and so we'll have to see maybe next year. To um, I, I definitely, definitely want to go on tour with him again. It's it's magical. It is. And uh, again, the album is called The Glow Within. And if mm -hmm. our audience haven't checked it out, I highly recommend it. It's really beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> and speaking of the pandemic, how has that changed you? Because you tour quite a lot. And I imagine that must put quite a bit of a damper in your touring schedule. Yes. Well, um, I would say um, if someone had told me that in 2019, that this was would uh, happen, that the tour life would stop abruptly like this. And, um, well, uh, I think I would have had a total breakdown. <laughs> I could not have imagined. Uh, um, but, uh, well, it's, uh, I think like we all, um, I, I adapted. Um, I, uh, the first thing I wanted to learn in, in March last year was to do uh, streaming concerts. And uh, I had great, great, great help from Ralf Kleemann <laughs> to set everything up because he's a yeah. uh, genius. I mean, he's, he's all the, the tech, tech whiz. Stuff, um, <laughs> he, yeah, apart from everything else. Yeah. <laughs> And um, so um, I got really great help, and um, because I thought uh, I don't want to lose my my life capacities, you know, like um, preparing a concert, playing in front of people, and uh, it's uh, it, it's like a muscle that you have to train. If you don't do it for one year or fifteen months, that uh, I really wanted to keep that up. And um, so I did um, quite a lot of streaming concerts uh, last year. And so, and this year, yeah, there, there were concerts I could do uh, with people in the same room. <laughs> but it's, of course, I mean, um, uh, it's, it's only a little percentage of what I did before, but it's, it's okay. I, I hope for, la for next year. And in the meantime, I, I write, I do sheet music, I uh, work on the videos and yeah. And have you considered doing more teaching? Because you mentioned how Kim Robinson has been one of your inspiration and attending a masterclass with her has been very helpful for you. And now you're one of those harpists that are inspiring others to play the harp. So um, as someone who look up to you, we would love more opportunities to learn from you. Um, I know you deliver workshops. Um, how, where can we uh, find you? And would you consider doing more of them going forward? Yeah. Um, well, first of all, thanks for that. <laughs> um, uh, I, I actually, I really love doing workshops. Um, like with people um, present in the same room, 
like um i don't know it's it's somehow this uh the atmosphere and then being able to walk from one person to the other and this is really my thing it's um or like generating an, an energy together and like I know what you learning mean. something and then playing it together and um well online teaching i have done this as well but i find it uh like i think like everybody <laughs> um a lot a lot harder because this level of um of communication without really saying something i mean that this doesn't really work so well online i will i've also thought about um doing t tutorials to my um uh most popular pieces um and um i think this is something I'm, i'll definitely do in the future that it doesn't have to be a workshop but that people can can watch it online and where can we um stay in touch with your touring and workshop schedule where can we find all those information um i have a newsletter on my website uh nadiabernstock.com um and apart from that i mean facebook is a good um I, I put everything on Facebook and on uh, on Instagram and uh, well, actually, I have to work more on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so uh, my newsletter on my website would be like the number one source for for workshops. Awesome! And you released a new single in October. And uh, tell us about this music and what other music or projects can we expect from you in the next little while? Yeah, well, I released this um, single. It's called The Days to Come. Actually, I already released a video last year. And so um, it, this is now the audio coming a little bit later. <laughs> um, this is um, a piece I wrote last year. Um, actually, uh, in summer um where i'm ref i reflected a little bit on 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 the situation and wanted to give it um well a reflective touch but also um kind of a hopeful um side and uh, yeah just listen to it on <laughs> youtube you'll you know what i mean um the um uh, the videos I'm working on right now, um, one of them is a, um, a duo that I wrote um, as a commissioned piece uh, for a harp duo of um, German and uh, Netherlands um, harpist. And uh, this will, um, I recorded this with my dear friend Eva Kurt uh, from Berlin. And uh, she's a classical harpist and um, this will uh, probably come out in in December. So this is uh, it will be on the YouTube channel, so you can check this. Yes, I will. Well, I'm very excited to um, have been able to take this opportunity and take a deeper dive into your music. Because when I before I talk to each guest, I try to go and peruse all their albums and look at all the videos <laughs> that they have. And there are definitely a lot of uh, little hidden gems that, like I said, they're a trip to the islands. We all know about it. But now I'm looking forward to diving into all the other ones that I haven't quite uh, discovered yet. And definitely looking forward to learning Takara. Um, in my, well, I, I describe it as my imaginary spare time because I tend to have the tendency of buying too many sheet music <laughs> and not having yeah. any time to play through it. <laughs> but I'm very excited to be uh, learning one of your pieces soon because, um, like I said, uh, it, it's so wonderful to to see other people that are inspiring us and, and we're learning a lot from what you're doing. And I really appreciate you telling us about your musical journey and some of the, the little tidbits behind the things that you're doing and things that uh, you enjoy. So thank you very much for this conversation, Nadia. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> we'll stay in touch. Yeah, all right. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Great. <laughs> okay. Bye. <laughs>